Welcome to our online election board worker training for clerks and judges. This training will allow you to understand your roles as clerks and judges for the May 10th, 2022 state primary election. Each election board worker will be issued an election board manual. There will also be a manual in the blue book and we also will have this online on our website. Please read it thoroughly prior to election day. If you've received our manual, please follow along as we will continually refer to it throughout the training. The manual, again, is also available on our website under the Election Board Worker Information link. Election Board general information will be found on pages 1 to 4 of your manual. An election board consists of an inspector, clerks, and judges. Basic requirements for poll workers are good eyesight, ability to sit from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m., ability to follow instructions and write legibly, the ability to assist in setting up the polling area, including setting up the polling booths and the express vote. State law requires election board workers to attend training prior to each statewide election. This online election board worker training will count as your training. Election board conduct. Please refrain from excessive and loud visiting with each other. Treat all voters with courtesy. Avoid asking personal questions of a vo voter unless required as an election duty. TVs, radios, and newspapers are not allowed because of political advertisements. Do not engage in any political conversations while conducting the election. Of course, do not smoke inside any pol polling area. Use the designated exterior polling area. We have two types of election board workers. Appointed election board workers who have been assigned to a specific precinct or polling place for a two-year period. And then we also have a reserve election board workers who are substitute workers who have been called upon to take a place of an appointed worker who is un unable to serve a specific election. Breaks and lunches. Breaks and lunches are allowed. The board should work together to make sure that there are 15 minute breaks in the morning and afternoon and also 30 minutes for lunch. The inspector is responsible for the payroll sheet. First thing on the morning of the election, each board worker should print his or her information on the payroll sheet and include an emergency contact name and phone number. Clerks and judges are paid $9 per hour and paid for training. If you're not working in your home precinct, it is important to request an early vote ballot. Applications are available on our website. Emergency procedures are located on page four of the manual. For severe weather, follow the building's emergency procedures. Move to a place of shelter. Without jeopardizing the safety of workers or voters, the board should take the ballots, ballot box, and the list of voters in the sign-in registers with them. Election day information is located on pages seven and eight of your manual. Election board workers should report to their polling location at 7 a.m. to assist in setting up for the day. The polls are open then from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. No voter may cast a ballot prior to 8 p.m. and anyone who is in line at 8 p.m. must be allowed to vote. If a line forms, please check to see if all voters are in the correct location. If there's more than one precinct located at the polling location, please make sure they are in the right line. Electioneering. There's no type of electioneering for any candidate or measure that is currently on the ballot for the current election within 200 feet of any polling location unless it is on private property not controlled by the ownership of the building in which the polling place is located. All cell phones should be silenced but are not required to be turned off. A voter may take a picture or a selfie of them casting or marking their own ballot. Any voter may challenge another voter's eligibility to vote. This does not happen very often, but a challenge oath is in the supply box. It is printed on goldenrod colored paper. You may answer questions from the media regarding the number of people who have voted. 
If they persist in asking additional questions, please have them call the election office at 402-441-7311. You will have some visitors on election day, district inspectors, express vote technicians, observers, and exit pollers. District inspectors are uh, a, an inspector who's just making sure that your polling location is set up correctly. They have a number of precincts for them to visit. Express vote uh, technicians will be checking to make sure your express vote is, is set up and is running cor correctly. There are poll watchers that can come out and watch the election and sometimes you'll have a poll watchers at your location. And a few precincts may have exit pollers that are from the different media. We have a new election board management system, which we've had now for a couple of years, which allows our office to communicate with our election board workers through emails and texts. If you have an email address, please make sure our office has it. This new system also allows election board workers to respond through an online portal and under normal circumstances, schedule a time for training. We appreciate your understanding as we implement this new system. The express vote, this is a machine that replaces the automark, which we have used, in, used prior to the 2020 election. It's, it is used to assist voters with disabilities to vote in private and unassisted. Ballots now have a coding track, the little black boxes on all four sides of the ballot. Previously, the coding track was just on the left side of the ballot. We use these same ballots in the 2020 and 2021 elections. If you did not work during those elections, you may not be aware of that. Voters no longer use a pencil for marking their ballot. They will use a black pen. Uh, you will also notice that our, 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 our current ballots, the ovals are smaller than they used to be. We also, judges will now initial ballots in red ink, and please keep the initials within the initials box. Manual pages 9 through 15 outline the duties of the inspector. Since this training is for clerks and judges, we will not discuss this with the clerks and judges. Manual pages 16 through 20 outline the general instructions for clerks. Clerk number one is responsible for the list of registered voters, which is in the blue book. The blue book is a three ring binder, which will be in the ballot box when the inspector picks up the supplies. Contents of the blue book include a signature guide, which can be used as a guide for a voter with vision issues to sign on the correct line in the sign-in register. The blue book also includes the list of registered voters. <laughs> The voters' names are listed in alphabetical order. The number the voter appears in the list of the voters is in the first column. The clerk will also print the line number from the sign-in register in the first column. The second column lists the voter's date of birth. The third column lists the voter's name and address. If there is a check mark to the right of the voter's name under ID required heading, this only means that the voter needs to provide ID, proper ID in order to vote. There are only a handful of voters in the county required to do this. Instructions for this is on page 17 of the manual. The fourth column lists the, the precinct number, ballot style, and party affiliation. This is important to make sure the voter is given the correct ballot for this election. If the precinct has more than one ballot style, that is also listed. The fifth column is where the clerk will print the voter's name once the clerk has verified all the information in the third column. If the word inactive is listed in the fifth column, it means that the election office has received some type of information that the voter may no longer live at that address. Please double check that the voter does live at that address before allowing the voter to vote. If the voter has a new address, the voter needs to vote in the precinct of his or her new address. If the word absentee is listed in the fifth column, it means that the voter has been issued an early vote or an absentee ballot. If the voter still wants to vote, the voter must vote a provisional ballot. The sixth column has a barcode, which represents the voter's registration number and is used after the election by the election office staff. 
The corrections and notation page is on yellow page paper. This is a page where the election board can place any corrections for the election staff to follow up after the election. The provisional ballot page is on pink paper. Any voter who votes provisionally must be listed on this page. The payroll form is found in the blue book and is on green paper. The inspector is required to make sure this is completed correctly. The ballot log card is also located in the blue book. We do have an election day poll worker hotline, which is 402-441-9090. Election board wor workers may use this phone number to reach an election staff member to assist them if they have any questions. There's also an abbreviated instruction sheet for election board workers that outlines the responsibility of each worker. There's an instruction sheet which will assist the election board on how to access the voter check website information if you have it access to a smartphone, tablet, or laptop at your polling location. This sheet is an outline for the polling accessibility guidelines for the election board workers to review and make sure that their polling pl place site meets all requirements. An election board manual is also located in your blue book. An individual precinct map is also located in the blue book. A listing of possible emergencies and how to handle those emergencies is also located in the blue book. We will now talk about the clerk's duties and responsibilities which are found on pages 15 to 18 in your manual. Clerk 1 is responsible for checking the voter in. Clerk 1 asks the voter for his or her name and then locate them in the list of registered voters. Clerk 1 asks the voter for his or her address and verifies that it matches the address listed in the list of voters. Clerk 1 checks the voter's party affiliation and ballot style if in a precinct that has more than one ballot style. Clerk 1 then tells clerk number 2 the voter's name, party affiliation, and ballot style, again, if you're in one of those precincts that has more than one ballot style. Clerk 1 prints legibly the voter's name in the fifth column under the printed name of voter. Then Clerk 1 will print the line number from the sign-in register where the voter signed their name. Important. This is a big reminder. Clerk must print the voter's name under the printed name of voter column after verifying all information. When the pe inspector picks up supplies the day before the election, they will be provided with a list of voters that have voted early after the poll book books were printed. One poll worker should print the word absentee in the list of voters next to those voters' names. This is a listing of the precincts that have more than one ballot style for the primary election. If a voter notes an error in the list of voters, such as transposing of letters in the name, or that there is someone on the list of voters who no longer resides in Lancaster County, this should be listed on the corrections and notations page. It is, in, it is on yellow paper. This, is, this allows the election staff to follow up after the election and make any necessary corrections or contact any voter regarding their eligibility to vote in Lancaster County. Clerk number two's duties. Clerk number two is responsible for the sign-in register. The sign-in register will be found in the ballot box along with the ballots that the inspector has picked up the day before the election. This is a picture of what the inside of the sign-in register looks like. Once clerk number one has verified the voter's name, address, and if in a precinct that has more than one ballot style, check the ballot style, party affiliation, he provides that information to clerk number two, and clerk number two prints the voter's name under the clerk prints voter's name in the sign-in register, and places a check mark under the appropriate columns on the left side of the sign-in sheet. Then clerk number two turns the sign-in book around and the voter signs his or her name and prints his or her address. This is a political party ballot distribution sheet. Because we're in a primary election, we have to make sure the voter gets the correct ballot. Of 
course, every Republican voter is going to receive a Republican voter ballot. Every Democratic voter is going to get a Democratic Party ballot. Every Libertarian voter is going to get a Libertarian Party ballot. And that Legal Marijuana Now, if they're registered as that, they'll get the Legal Marijuana Now Party. And then if they're not registered with a party as a nonpartisan, they will get a, a nonpartisan ballot. A nonpartisan voter may also request one of, one of the nonpartisan partisan ballots shown below. So they will actually receive a second ballot if they would like. They don't need to, but they will also receive a second ballot. They could receive a nonpartisan Republican ballot, a nonpartisan Democratic ballot, a nonpartisan Libertarian ballot, or a nonpartisan Le Legal Marijuana Now ballot. This is a notice that you will also have in your, in your supply box, is a notice to nonpartisan voters. If you're registered as a nonpartisan, you can't receive the nonpartisan ballot like we said before. And then what would be on the nonpartisan party ballot? For instance, the Republicans only allow the congressional race to be on the ballot, while the Democratic Party and the legal marijuana and libertarian parties do allow more races. When, the, when a nonpartisan voter signs in, the board work, worker should ask the voter, nonpartisan voter, if they'd like an additional ballot. Now we'll move on to the judges. General instructions for judges are on manual pages 21 to 23. Judge number one is responsible for issuing the ballots to the voters. Remember, voters are no longer marking their ballots with pencils, they'll be using a blank black pen. Also new, new since uh, 2020, we did this in 2020 as well, judges will initial a ballot using a red ink pen, and please keep those initials within the initials box. Initialing the bottom of the ballot. Two judges of different political parties must initial the ballot to make the ballot official. The name of the party ballot is at the top of the ballot. If you're serving in one of those precincts with more than one ballot style, the ballot style number will be indicated in the lower left-hand corner of the ballot. This is a sample of the ballot for this election. Also new for this year, voters will be marking the ballot with black ink. We are no longer using pencil. The judge should give the, vote, give the following instructions to the voter. This is on page 22 of the manual. Blacken the ovals of your choice completely. Use only the black pen provided. Do not cross out. If you change your mind, ask for a new ballot. Inform the voter that the ballot has two sets of initials, making it official. When finished voting, bring the ballot back to the ballots, back in the ballot sleeve so that both sets of initials are shown. This is a sample of the ballot sleeve. The judge's initials must appear in the cutout at the bottom of the ballot sleeve. The voter will then go to the appropriate polling booth or the express vote to cast his or her ballot. Judge number two is responsible for initiating ballots and processing voted ballots. When the voter brings the ballot back to judge number two in the ballot sleeve, judge number two should look for the initials in the opening of the bottom of the ballot sleeve, verify that the ballot is official, meaning there are two sets of initials at the bottom, if that is the case, the ballot is then deposited in the ballot box. If the voter makes an error on the ballot, the voter may request a new ballot. The ballot with the error on it must be spoiled by the voter by writing void on the ballot, and the voter then issued a new official ballot. The ballot marked void is placed in the spoiled ballot envelope. If the ballot is returned to judge number two and there are no initials or only one set of initials, then the ballot must be rejected and the voter issued a new ballot. The voter should write rejected on the ballot and then issued a new official ballot. The rejected ballot is placed into the rejected ballot envelope. We're going to talk about provisional voting procedures, and those are located on pages 24 to 26 in the manual. Provisional voting allows a voter to cast a ballot with their eligibility in, is in question or otherwise would not be permitted to cast a ballot at their polling location. 
The content of the provisional ballot is no different than a regular ballot, but is cast provisionally until the, voter, uh, the, the, until the election officials can verify the voters' eligibility to vote and are voting at the correct precinct at the election. Reasons that a voter will need to vote provisionally? The voter is removed to a new ad, a street address, even if it is within the same precinct. The voter is flagged absentee in the list of voters, but he has decided to vote at their regular polling place on election day. Or finally, if the voter is flagged ID required in the list of registered voters, but does not provide the appropriate, definition, appropriate, appropriate identification, that is, which is located on page 17 of the manual. Each precinct will have approximately 50 provisional ballot packets. In the front of each provisional ballot packet, there will be a provisional ballot voting checklist with step-by-step -step instructions. Step 1. Verify that the voter is in the correct precinct and polling location. This can be done by using the maps provided in the Blue Book and Supply Box. You can use the Voter Check website, which instructions are in the Blue Book, or they can also call the Election Office Poll Worker Hotline at 402 441 9090 to make sure that the, the and make sure that you have the voter's name, date of birth, and new address. The election board and voter must complete all four sections of the provisional ballot application form. Section one, poll worker completes this portion, which includes the location of the polling location where the voter is voting, plus the reason the voter is voting provisionally. Section 2, the voter completes this section with their new address. This section is a Nebraska voter registration application. Section 3, the voter selects a five-digit PIN number, personal identification number, which allows the voter to find out after the election whether their ballot was counted or not and the reason the ballot was not counted. Section 4 is where the voter actually signs the form. The provisional ballot envelope has two sections. The voter must complete and sign section one, and then the sec election board will complete section two. If the voter does not sign section one of this envelope, the ballot will not be counted. Clerk number, the clerk will then print the voter's name, address, and line number from the sign-in register on the provisional voters page in the blue book. The clerk will print the voter's name in the sign-in register along with the appropriate check marks including a check mark under the provisional ballot column. Then the voter will sign their name and print their address. Voters needing assistance information may be found on page 27 of your manual. If a family member or friend assists the voter, it, the, the person assisting the voter must sign the voter assistance oath found in the front of the sign-in register. If two board members of different political parties assist the voter, they do not need to sign the oath, they just need to initial by the voter's name in the sign-in register. Express vote information is found on page 27 of the manual. The state of Nebraska purchased new machines that assist voters with disabilities to be able to vote in private and unassisted. Yeah. There's a separate uh, video on our website explaining how to operate the express vote. This machine replaces the old Audemars, which was very heavy and cumbersome to set up, operate, and move. An express vote technician will visit your polling site first thing in the morning to make sure you have it set up correctly. There will be a two-page instruction sheet on how, to, on how to simply set up your express vote, both located in your supply box and, in the, and with the express vote. Closing of the polling place. This information is found on page 29 of your manual. Make sure you sign all forms. Place all unused ballots in the clear plastic bag with the yellow unused ballot insert. Make sure your rejected ballots are sealed in the rejected ballot envelope. Make sure your unused but initial ballots or any spoiled ballots are in the, sealed up in the spoiled ballot envelope. Include everything listed on the, on the sign-in register envelope has been placed in that envelope. Put all supplies neatly in the supply box and clean up the voting area. At the end of the day, the voted ballot procedure was found on page 31 of the manual. Two poll workers of different political party affiliations will open the ballot box and count the number of ballots, including the ex express vote ballots, 
cast plus the number of provisional ballot envelopes in Section 1. Place the number of check marks under the nonpartisan Republican, nonpartisan Democratic, nonpartisan Libertarian, nonpartisan Legal Marijuana Now columns in Part 2. Subtract that number from Part 2 from those in Part 1. That number should match the number of voters you have in the sign-in register. Once this step is completed, then place the ballots, including provisional ballots and express vote ballots, in the ballot transport box along with the ballot log card. In the supply box, you will find seals for the transport ballot box. You will find, um, also find a name tag with a lanyard. Thank you for your help, and thank you for your assistance in making democracy happen in Lancaster County.